In this video I will show how to inspect the energy model within Revit. To do that you need to go to the Revit icon, go to export GBXML. Here you actually get a picture of the zone model. In here there is different stuff you should be aware of and stuff you can specify like which building type it is. At this stage it's only possible to apply for the whole building so in this case it should be a school so I can click on the drop down menu and find school or university and the location should also be specified by click here and then the small bottom and then it's possible to write an address here and select the nearest location so this is something to do with the weather files and the climate that will be used for simulating and having an impact on the energy consumption and of course also the indoor environment. Ground plane, that's also important to specify. It should typically be just a level zero, but in some cases there maybe could be a basement and then it's important to specify where do we have our ground plane so it calculates the zones that it is in the ground for example. Different ways of exporting geometry here we just should choose rooms because we have used rooms because we spaces but spaces is typical of something the MEP uh, engineers deal with how it should export the geometry there is also different ways you could export it with shading but typical these complex giving a better result and there should also be shading surfaces but typically it doesn't work that good with, with the choice of complex vermilions. So this one typically is the, the best one. And if you want to include the thermal properties of the constructed the construction like walls and roof etc. then this should be clicked out. Then you will use those properties. To explain the silver space tolerance then it's quite helpful to go to the help function of Revit and search for sliver tolerance spaces. Here it's actually shown as an example here if we have a space here that is not defined as an interior room or it could just be a shaft or whatever it could then you can by editing this sliver tolerance this could be considered as a one or two zones that was just beside each other because it's very important as also written here that we don't have any empty spaces so we have a model or zone model for the whole entire building and if we didn't edit the, the sliver tolerance then this will be considered as external surfaces and will have a huge heat loss but actually it's not an exterior surface so that's uh, why it's important to look into this sliver spaces another example here this one could also just be merged into these two rooms here the next tab is details and if we click on this we can actually see the different rooms organized in levels so if I click on this we can see the different rooms that is in the model if I example click on the first one here and press highlight then I can have it highlighted in the model we should be aware of these warnings so in this case we could click on this warning and what it's warning about that is this room is not placed and it will be ignored in the energy analysis model that's okay in this case but typically you should be aware of what these warnings is about I could also instead instead of highlighting I could have it isolated so actually it's some of the same function as you have in in the Revit project if we click on the analytical surface model here the model will be divided off in different types of surfaces like walls, ceilings, roof, etc. as we can see here. So suddenly there is a underfolder or sub elements to this space, the toilets, and we can see for example the roofs, click on the different parts or if there are more parts and this is the, the same way. We can actually click here and, and look at the different parts of each room and using as well again the highlights or the isolate function here let's see here for example we have a atrium that is a zone but the, there is a warning we could click on the warning there is some volumes overlap 
So this one we should be aware of and go back into the Revit model and check have we done it correctly and go back to this export and see how it looked like. And in general this window have the same navigation function as within Revit. So by shift and right click we can orbit the model and there is also the view cube so we can see it from above or whatever we want to have. So this is actually quite good way of looking at the model to make sure that everything is as it should be and there is different method of looking at different levels as we can see here. When we have checked all the warnings and checked or edited the model so we don't have these warnings anymore then we are ready for going to the next steps of simulating this detailed Revit model. We could say save these settings and then we'll come back to the Revit environment. In other videos I will show how to run the analysis, how to create construction and so on.